let's start. I'm going to show you where you can get all the activities, what you will find in those activities. And they are not very complicated, so we won't read everything because it's kind of a story for the cycle one, cycle two. So you're going to take the time to read that story, but we're going to talk about how you can, you know, uh, um, use this activity with your students, either online or uh, if you want to send the links to your students. So where you can find the activities, you see here there's a link, domainlang.qc.ca. So Nadia, if you want to provide the link um, in the chat box, that would be great. Whoops, I'm sorry, my, I have a quick mouse that uh, <laughs> is very sensitive. Okay, so in the news section, you will find the different activities. So you will find the elementary for cycle one, cycle two, it's the clumsy little elf. And you will find this activity for cycle three, uh, holiday traditions around the world. The world. Maybe you will find that the cycle one or the cycle two activity might, uh, you know, might profit your cycle three students. You decide depending on uh, your uh, clientele, depending on your students, you could use the cycle two activity if you want to. OK, so if I go on the website, if I click here. You will go in the new section. Then you will have a variety of uh, um, articles. So we're going to take a look at the clumsy little elf here. OK, so what you will find in this section see here is it's kind of a preview of the different uh, activity or the, the, the resources. But if you want to download everything and have access to everything, you need to access the activities or the resources on your left. OK, so what we did, we provided here. Do you see here? It's a proposed learning sequence. OK, so if you want to take the time to read that, and that's what we're going to do today, explain how we would do it with students. So there's a proposition of uh, how to conduct the activity with students. The only thing, the, uh, the also what we did, we did a teacher presentation. So you, here you have a link to the pre teacher presentation and Google slide. But if you want to have access to a PowerPoint version, we we have we provided a PowerPoint version at the bottom. OK, so you can either use one of them depending on your uh, teaching environment. So I'm going to click on the presentation cycle one. I will tell you right away that cycle one and cycle two are similar in the structure. The only thing that changes is we decided to uh, write the story, uh, uh, write a, a second version of the story of the clumsy little elf because we wanted to uh, have uh, include um, um, vocabulary that was a bit uh, not harder, but uh, that includes uh, included prepositions and so on. OK. Is that clear for now? <laughs> Maybe a thumbs up or something like that. Nadia, can you tell me what, uh, what you see? There's no, no comments so far. OK, perfect. So let's go through the process. So the idea. OK, so we're going to talk about two things now. What I will do right away is present a way I can do it in synchronous. Synchronous, it means if I'm online with my students, OK? So now if I'm online with my students, that is what I will model, OK? If I am not online with my students, we're going to talk about that after, OK? So of course, you're going to welcome your students. Uh, we are proposing in the uh, sequence that you could uh, have um, Christmas music in the background, not students, but you <laughs> to welcome them. You could do a special event uh, where you invite them to be in pajamas or something like that. So we want to create like a, a, a moment with them. Of course, you can modify the presentation. So if you don't need any some slides, you could decide to uh, adapt them and erase those slides. 
We included some functional language. So I don't know if you've practiced this with your students, but you might want to uh, practice turning on and turning off the microphones. OK, because if they're the microphones are turned on, you will hear a lot of background noise and maybe it, it, the, the experience will be uh, uh, less interesting. And you can turn on, turn off the, micro, uh, the, the camera. So if the bandwidth is not working well, or if some students don't want to have their cameras on. So this is up to you. You decide what you want, OK? Also, uh, we included some functional language. So we want them to listen to the story because it's, the, it's a story that you will read. But we also included audio. So you could also press the audio and uh, this, the, the story could uh, be read uh, by uh, the narration of Nadia. You want them to participate as a, at some point and raise their hands, okay, if they want to say something. We've included the functional, the, the, the vocabulary that uh, will be needed in the story to, to understand the story. So we could go, we could talk about, you know, present the vocabulary. So bells, Christmas lights, candy cane. And if I go back here, if I click, uh, let me check. Oh, it's, it's it's not there. It's probably in the proposed sequence. I, there is a document missing. OK, so I'm sorry about that. I will add it. But in the proposed sequence, you have a handout here. And don't worry, I will add it in the section after. No, it's not that one. Whoops. <laughs> It's the vocabulary cards. So we have to, a lot of documents, okay? So there you go. So we also provided vo the vocabulary cards here. So what you could do is you could send it at home. They could print it on on their at their uh, you know at home, or you could print it, print those cards before they leave uh, for Christmas. And you could use those cards to verify if they understood some vocabulary words. So, for example, if I go back in the teacher presentation, OK, can you show me the candy cane? So they could have the pictures and they could show you the candy cane. They could show you the gingerbread house. They could show you the stockings. Thank you, Nadia. <laughs> uh, the health and so on. OK, so this is a way of verifying if they're following and if they they're with you okay if they understand good we also if i go back here if you click on here you see the q the q stands for quizlet so we included also the uh, flashcards. okay so you could use this okay to present the vocabulary words there is an option where is it because I'm not connected. <laughs> there is an audio connection where da, 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 because I'm not connected, I don't see it. Uh, it's there. OK, look here at the bottom option. I can activate the audio. So if I click, whoops. Blue gift. OK, you can also have the audio included. So this can be students can use this at home also. OK, so if there's anything, please let me know. I know there's a lot of things. So what what I will do is I will recap. OK, so present the vocabulary. You can use this page or you can use Quizlet if you feel comfortable. OK, you can ask them to to show you the pictures. OK, because it's hard if they don't speak in cycle one, if it's hard for them, you know, to point where it is. You don't see what they point on your on your screen. OK, so that's why we use the pictures. So next step. Maybe we could ask them if they have an elf in their house, because if we're going to talk about an elf. You could ask them to uh, show you their elf if they have one. This is optional. You could decide to ask another question if you want to. Next step would be to read the story. So we provided you with a story. So the link is included right here in the presentation. So I just click on it. And there you go, you have the story. And like I mentioned, Nadia included the audio. The clumsy little elf. 
Okay. There you go. So we can read the story with them. Okay. Same thing. In December, sometimes little elves visit some houses. Do you have one in yours? Maybe it's too shy to show itself. Okay. So uh, I don't know what you, you want to do because we, we won't necessarily read the entire story. But what we did is we uh, created a story with the repetitive structure. So it's easy to, um, to uh, uh, you know, students could participate in repeating some, some parts of the story. So he is very clumsy. So on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, and so on until uh, Christmas, uh, the day before Christmas. Okay. So I'm going to go fast with that one because I won't necessarily read the stories. I'm going to go through the different slides, but we've included some uh, animation there. So it's uh, a bit more interactive. There we go. So take the time to read it on your own, okay? And I'm going to go through the story because I want to present what is the other activity, okay? We're almost at the end. Okay, so Santa Claus arrives. <laughs> so Snowball wanted to place the gifts under the three. So there's a magic spell. And everything went wrong and everything disappeared, okay? So now we, what we did <laughs> is that everything disappeared around the house. So we decided to include a game. So do you accept? to help Snowball find everything before Christmas morning. So if I click on I accept, the game will appear. OK, so I'm going to stop here right right now just to make sure that you're uh, <clears throat> still on board with me because I'm, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> so are you on board with me? Are you there? Please let yes. me know. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Yay, thank yes. you. <clears throat> okay, so I know I went fast, but of course I won't necessarily read the story, okay? So now maybe Nadia, if you want to explain the, the game part, do you want to do this? Okay, yes. We're talking about cycle one, but cycle two, like I mentioned, it's the same structure, okay? Same structure, different story, diff same images, but the story, you know, we we invite you to read it, but it's the same. You're going to do the same thing. OK, the game is also the same thing. The only thing is that the name of the of the elf is different. OK, so who will put in the chat the first the name of this, the 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 elf? What's the name of the elf? Go quick in the chat. First one to, to write it down. Sandra, I don't see the chat. Tell me who is the first one to write it down. Snowball, good job, and uh, uh, Sivian, you're winning. So you can put <laughs> with your students, right? <laughs> so basically, when you do, of course, you've read the story, you've had the students repeat, you've had them maybe move around and uh, uh, make gestures according to what's happening, you know, oh, no, not, you know. So uh, you've done that already with them. So they've repeated the vocabulary. So once they're ready to do the game, uh, you click on, you know, Santa, of course, arrives. There's a problem. Oh, no. Um, in the game, there's no narration, but uh, you can read it again with them to remind them what it is. Once it, they are at the game, let's go. So basically, they've practiced the vocabulary. So you can have them um, repeat the words. You can have them uh, uh as again if they did gestures in the stories they can do the same gestures here um you they can you know sandra was talking about showing the vocabulary images so you can use you know replay with the vocabulary here because they will use this these um 
images in the game afterwards. So they need to be able to, to uh, recognize those because they will have to say them maybe, uh, depending on their level, of course. Uh, maybe they'll have to find the image. So um, this is a time when you can practice with them. So let's go play the game. Um, so okay, yes. Okay. Just before you, if you over, uh, uh, if next, you over if the, no, it's okay. If you over uh, the images, uh, uh, you will see now you cannot go back okay. <laughs> because it's a, it's a game, but you will have the the written, uh, the word written uh, over it. Yes, okay. that's it. Thank you, Sandra, the voice of reason. So here you uh, on this first page, for example, you need to find three objects. So um, those objects are hidden in the image and the students know their names. So you can either ask them to describe if they're strong, top, uh, down, uh, left, right, and uh, but they can, you can send them the link directly in the chat and then they can open it up on their own computer and do it on their own. Uh, so they could try to find the images. So I don't know if someone can describe where one of the objects, if you find one of the objects and some of these objects hidden are not the ones that are in the story. So they have to really find the ones that are on their paper. And remember in the, in the plan, there is one page where there's a handout where students can check what they find so um so uh they once they see it they can just check you know what they find and uh it's just the idea of uh, playing around with these images so i see here someone said uh, christmas tree okay the christmas tree i see it here so i oh you found the christmas tree i see here the holly yes but the, the holly is not in the story but <laughs> this extra vocabulary that you can it, use it right there's the gift the stocking yes yeah. the gift is here so you found the yellow gift so this is a game that you can play with your students uh, or on their own depending if you're synchronous or asynchronous and of course there's extra vocabulary so you can play with them if your st students are stronger you know what this what is this uh oh no the word's not there but you can ask them what is it and play around with it and uh, I might add, you remember the reason why we provided the sheet and they need to check when they find the object is because if in cycle one, they're not uh, you know, able to describe where mm -hmm. is the object or even type it, you know, they could simply, you know, when you find the, the object in the, in the image, you just check, you know, uh, beside the, imi uh, you know, the, the image on your sheet. And then you could ask them to show you the sheet. Okay, we're ready. You found three objects. Let's continue and so on, okay? So the idea is to really have them participate, but like Nadia mentioned is they could also play on their own and you could send a link uh, uh, directly in the chat box if they're comfortable doing that. So let's, so I won't do it all, but uh, basically, oh, this one is harder though. Maybe Sandra, I want them to find this one because uh, uh, I want someone to describe where the powdered sugar is in the chat, please, because that one is harder to find. So where can, can you describe where the powdered sugar is? Is it uh, at the top, in the middle, the bottom, left, middle, right? You know, think about the tic-tac-toe, you know, the, the different... Uh, uh, where is the uh, powder, powdered sugar? This is the one that's not really Christmassy, but eh, it looks like snow. Oh, so someone, Sylvie uh, mentioned at the bottom. Yay! So here it is. You found the powdered yeah. sugar. The so. Bottom. Good. So you know your students. So if you've seen, you know, you might want to review uh, top, uh, left, right, bottom, and so on. If you've seen that in class, you could ask them to reuse this, uh, these words to uh, either open their mic, uh, turn on their mic and tell you, or type it in the chat box. Okay. And here, well, it's the final one, the tastiest one. Well, maybe maybe the candy canes are, but so, you did it. You saved Christmas. So this is how it ends. So uh, in the end, of course, uh, your students will all save Christmas. So uh, this is what the game is. Uh, the clumsy. Well, we had a lot of fun doing it. Yes. 
<laughs> we had a lot of fun. So this is really like um, a period. So there's, uh, you know, uh, presenting the, <laughs> we uh, <clears throat> presenting the, sorry, I was reading at the same time. <laughs> so um, uh, presenting the vocabulary, reading the story, playing the game. So if you have time left, what you could do is you could take, they could take a sheet of paper with their uh, colored pencils and you could ask them to uh, draw their favorite part of the story. You could ask them to invent a trick that snowball or cycle two, his name is Klutz, okay? Or Klutz might do. And uh, if they're able to write, they could write maybe on Saturday, snowball or clutch tried to okay so you could include a bit of um, of writing but it's really in the um, you we want to have fun with it okay so uh, also sandra maybe uh, i'll just mention you know uh, all uh, both presentations do have a do, both uh, levels have a presentation document but if you look here at the top right there it says use template because you can I don't know if you mentioned it, Sandra, earlier. I don't think so. But when you use template, it means that you when you it it when you open it up, it goes into your Google account. That way, you can modify it as you know very easily, and it becomes yours. So and you can make changes according to what you um, what you need uh, with your students. So just a, you know when you see that template idea, but of course your Google account. Uh, it must be uh, opened before you download it. Uh, that way, it'll be saved automatically. Yeah, I have. I, I will answer two questions. Uh, so Rebecca asked me, "What must we print for our students?" So you have two documents if you want. So in the uh, proposed sequence, you have the vocabulary cards. There you go, and the handout. Okay. So vocabulary sheet, you see it? So this and the game handout, okay? So they will be able to, if you print that before they go home, they could use that and you could, um, you know, uh, ask them some questions with that. So they, they could participate. As for evaluation, we didn't include evaluation because it's really for us it was really a, a, a you know a, a fun activity to do with students but you could you know you could check if they understand you know if you ask them you know the vocabulary but it's really um, you know uh, uh, not a, an evaluation activity it's really a, a, a special activity activity with students I think it's it's harder to if you want to evaluate you would need to think about how you would ver you would need to verify each student's understanding um, and so on so uh, or ask them so if you you want them to uh, draw something or write something you would need to have a way to uh, add the traces of what they did okay but th that was not our intention when we created those activities. Do you, have, do you want to add something, uh, Nadia? Well, I just, want to make sure, I just wanted to show how, how clear it is on the handout that ex and it explains. And it's the same sequence for cycle one and cycle two. It's just you adapt to the level of your students. So, uh, you know, th those are pretty uh, self-explanatory. So, and you also have extra activity that we found that we found really cute. So uh, for Christmas. Uh, so we added them in the in the handout. So that's uh, what I wanted to add. Uh, maybe we can mo move on because the cycle two is pretty much the same. Uh, let's go on to the cycle three one. Maybe we could ask. Okay, so this was cycle one, cycle two with the Christmas stories and the game. Like we mentioned, we did something for cycle three. Okay. Uh, it's it's different. <laughs> it's uh, we're uh, we're talking about holiday holiday traditions around the world. But like we mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, you can use the cycle two uh, version of the story. You know your students. You know you know they like uh, when uh, you read stories to them. So if you're used in doing that, maybe you want to do that with them and uh, use the story and maybe uh, have them write uh, you know a, sh 
couple of sentences or invent their own uh, uh, tricks, like we mentioned, uh, clots, what could it do on, on a Saturday or something like that, okay? So you wanna continue, Nadia? I'll start now and you can move, jump in maybe. Uh, so this, what I'm sharing, is sharing again is in the presentation document. Again, you can go if, and find the special activities. Again, on the news of the service de Mendelang, I, I know I'm repeating, but some people arrived a bit later maybe, so I'll, I'm repeating where we can find these uh, uh, documents. So all in the news section of our website, uh, you have uh, elementary, second uh, and cycle three, and then also secondary if ever you have uh, uh, the interest for that too. And we also have created a presentation for cycle three uh, that, that's the teacher presentation, so you can take it, uh, modify it according to your needs again. And uh, this one is not a template, but what you can do is just make a copy. Of course, uh, we will not grant you access to edit our, t our uh, original copy, but you can make a copy of the entire presentation. And then if you have your Google account opened, it'll uh, save in your Google account. So, so again, uh, you know, it's it's a bit yeah. more. About, it's about traditions. So, um, Sandra, did you want to add something? I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. I just said there's also a PowerPoint version. So, if you're not a Google user, you just open, you know, download the PowerPoint version. Okay. And uh, so, basically, this is about tradition. It's an escape game. So yes. when, so an escape game or a breakout. So there, you have two names. So it. It means that they need to, like Nadia mentioned, they need to collect information in order to be able to finish it. And um, what I wanted to say, when we talk about text, it's not only reading, it's also viewing text. So there's all, there are also videos included in there. Thanks. So in, again, you can find the game on the Service uh, National de Mendelang website, but also on this from this presentation you can go straight to this activity here and uh, like Sandra said it is an escape game so of course we can start and play but the important thing oh I'm going to turn on the turn off uh, the, the the turn off uh, the the sound because what you need to figure out before you start doing uh, this game with your students, you need to decide if you're going to be doing it with them uh, synchronous, you know, online, or if you're going to let just send them the link and have them uh, do the game on their own. There is also, again, a presentation document with a step-by-step -step of everything you can do. In there, you have all the possibilities online, uh, 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 asynchronous, uh, what you have to share with them, and you have all the steps that explains all the questions you can ask. You, you even have the, the answer to, uh, you know, to all of all the, word, the letters that uh, you have to find. You have the answer right there. So if you take time to read all this, it should help you uh, figure out how you can use this activity with your students because we all have different needs, different uh, realities. So it's important that you take the time to assess your needs and your students' needs before you start doing it. So. Can, uh, I, add something? So Can I add something, Nadia? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, so Nadia mentioned that you could do it synchronous or asynchronous. We don't recommend that you share your screen and you play the game as a whole group. OK, it won't be the same experience. So what we propose, but you decide, OK, <laughs> it's your classroom. You decide, you could um, create if you're familiar with uh, the breakout rooms, so they could be, um, uh, you know, you could place them in teams and they could go all go in breakout rooms and they would, uh, as, a, as a team, try to solve and, and um, you know, the, the final, um, the final um, cue or the final answer or you could send the link in the chat like I just did, okay? They would click on it and they would play the game. And maybe you could say the first uh, student who uh, 
found uh, the the clue, you know, the final clue, just write me a private message, okay? Just create a kind of a, a challenge uh, between your students, but it's a it's a, not a it's not a competition, okay? So that's what I wanted to mention. Yes, we're, this is collaborative work, Sandra. It's okay. We recommend is to take the time before they leave to read the mission, okay? So if we go on the um, uh, and the slide oh. the mission, yeah, or on the Genially. On the Genially, okay. Yeah, that's it. So you make sure they understand, okay? So they will have, so if you start. click on Start, okay? So they're in the introduction. If you click on Here. introduction, yeah. So together, we will read. <laughs> Thank you. So we will read, so you click on let's go. Okay, so we're gonna read different texts and get familiar with traditions around the world. And when I click on let's go, uh, so this is our, the mission. So they will read texts and uh, videos. They will need to answer questions. They will answer a series of questions. Then they will have at the end special letters that they would need to write down on a sheet of paper. Okay, they want to make sure that they keep those letters. Okay, so once they're ready, they click on the, I'm ready and they will have, uh, if you click on the three, uh, on the three lines on the top left, yes, that's it. You can go back to the menu, okay? So you have three um, categories. You have the tasty traditions, you have the spooky ones and you have the wacky ones, okay? so. They are all, they are situated in categories, so they need to answer the questions for each categories before to collect the letters, and then they will be able to unscramble the letters and find the final clue. So when they're ready, they click on, so click here when finished. There you go. So we're giving them a hint because we know in cycle three they might find it difficult. So they click on I'm ready when they are ready to, uh, there you go. And then they will write the word, okay? Make sure they understand that password is case sensitive. It means that all the letters are in capital, capital, so everything must be in all caps, okay? So that's the only cue that I want to make sure that students, they need to understand that because we don't want to have uh, some frustrations <laughs> uh, when they, they try to figure it out, okay? So that's it, yay! <laughs> so mainly that's the breakout game. So I have a question, uh, Rebecca asked me in classroom, but no iPads, what's set up? Oh, so you're gonna do it in your classroom with your students? I would simply project the game and play with uh, all of your students and ask them to write, uh, you know, uh, raise their hand, or you could ask them to write their answer, you know, uh, on a sheet of paper, just to make sure that everyone participates, you know, that it's not always the same students that answer. So you ask them not to uh, uh, answer uh, the questions, they write it, and then we could all answer as a group, okay? That, that would be my suggestion if you play it with all your uh, of your student with all your classroom okay so in this activity of course there's always possibilities to talk about their own life right and uh, they like doing that <laughs> so these are possible questions to discuss either in like sandra explained in the breakout rooms uh, you can send them in breakout rooms and talk about uh, traditions at home and uh, or you could do it as a as a group and um, what what we did also again uh, we did suggest um, a, uh, an activity of a possible writing and text production like writing a short text about traditions in your family but you, you can go and t and choose your own uh, uh, your own uh, idea because it could also be they create one uh, they are they may want to uh, take one and then modify it uh, apply it to their own life. So those are possible uh, writing and text productions. And of course you have our, um, the link again. This Remember that this is the teacher presentation tool. You can use this online uh, uh, when you share your, your um, 
your screen or not. Uh, you can also sh uh, send it to your students or, you know, use it on as you wish so that your students can follow you when you do the activity. And uh, remember that everything is in the present, the suggested uh, presentation. There's a question. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, how long does it take to break out for average students? You know, they have three categories. I. It's, it's a good question. <laughs> it all depends on the, the students, uh, the participation of the students and how you do it. Yeah, but I it's know. not, you know, the, the videos are average. You, don't, you know, sometimes they are a minute, two minutes long. Sometimes they are three minutes long and you have a couple of questions. Uh, um, I would say I would imagine half an hour maximum. I would imagine that, but you know what? We haven't tried it with students yet. It would take at least, you know, with the introduction, you know, with the activate prior knowledge, with the uh, the activity, the breakout, and finalize everything. It would be a period, you know. How would you share it with your students? Well, you could share it in your, you know, you you probably have a place where you share information with your students. So this is the same, you just use the same channel that you use usually to share information with your students, either uh, with your uh, Google Classroom, your Teams, your uh, also some teachers use Padlet or other tools like that. But any, you know, don't don't change the way that you share information. Just use the same uh, uh, channel that you usually use with your students so that it's easy for them to find it. Um, and uh, you can uh, the other question was which link you want to make sure uh, it's probably I the, the I don't want them to try to access it and not be able to and then I get emails and messages I and understand sure sharing the right link where okay. they can start from there is it the original link that you sent like it's the, you need you need to say you don't send you don't send the link to our website so you will need to send the link maybe Nadia if you want story. To yeah, the story. So maybe show, you know, this, the, the, the link that is um, in the address bar of the story. Okay. So okay. maybe Nadia, you can show it so everyone, yes. it's clear for everyone. So yes, will I will things. show it. Yeah. Because the thing is, uh, if you sh share the story, um, you also share, uh, you know, the game is at the end, so it's integrated. It, it it leads to the game. So if you share the story per se, uh, it'll in the end they'll go straight to the the game. So uh, this is the link. I'm going to put it uh, in the chat to just so that you have that. But it's also in the uh, the, the the presentation, the sequence. But it's true that. Share the story. This is a cycle two one. Uh, do you, I don't know if you want me to share. I don't know if you want to share uh, all of them, but um, it's not the game. The you know sometimes some you know you can have them. Uh, you can share the game afterwards when you know later on uh, when they want to review and play uh, on their own after. That's always possible. And uh, I'll also share the third one which is the cycle three one here. I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm going a bit too fast, but I just want you to get the information. Uh, this is, of course, it's not the story, it's just the game. But uh, you, if, if you use the three links here, it'll send, um, uh, you'll have the, all the information for your students. Uh, they will be able to click on it and open it. And you know, the iPad could be the same. When you open it on the iPad, it works. So, okay. So we would we would have loved to play the games with you, but uh, of course, uh, with the explanation, we only have a 10 minute left. <laughs> so I don't know if you uh, went and look at uh, the games and the stories and you have any questions, things that, you're wondering how to do it. We're here uh, to answer any questions for the for the next 10 minutes. Are we that clear? No, no questions. Impossible. <laughs> well, we did have some. Yeah. So uh, do you think you'll be using it?
Tell, tell us in the chat, will you be using it? And oh, oh, and we'd love to hear about how it goes with your students and everything. So if you if you want to to share how it went with your students, uh, we'd love to hear about it. So feel free, we have in the, maybe we can finish uh, talking about um, uh, doing the presentation if there's no other question. Uh, the secondary one, Sylvie, uh, it's in the other presentation. Uh, that uh, Martin and Diane were doing at the same time because most of the teachers only do one level. I know that some of you uh, don't, but um, this here is being recorded. Uh, it should be recorded also uh, for the secondary level, so it uh, it should work and you should be able to go back on it. All right, thank you. You are welcome. We have a few slides also to share, but uh, Maybe I'll, okay, oh, we have a yes, lot of yes. 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 Good. So, so I'll share maybe the we will finish with that because you have a possibility to earn a badge. Yes. And also we're going to talk about in January what we will do. So we're already. Uh -huh. uh, you need to find out about that. Yeah. So <laughs> here. Okay. So we have this. We already talked about synchronous, asynchronous, but look at this. Sandra, do you want to talk about that? I can. I was reading all the good comments. Thank oh, okay. I'll read them. <laughs> no, that's so. So <laughs> in January, uh, what we decided to do, we 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 did the <clears throat> each week we present different things. So what we decided to do in January is uh, <clears throat> try out something different. Okay. So on the 13th, January 13th, we will uh, talk about our online course on Campus Ricci. So if you haven't seen it, if you haven't tried our online course, how to integrate technology into your planning, we will talk about that. But we will also invite you to try out something. And the week after, you're going to come back, ask your question or present something. So we want to guide you into using something with your students. So we want you to really try out things. OK, so this is the plan for January. Uh, the 13th and the 20th. On the 25th, what we want to do, we want to talk about hybrid planning. So we know it's sometimes it's hard to plan, you know, uh, if you have to switch online because there are uh, some cases in your class, your classroom is closed. So we want to help you uh, to plan one, you know, one planning and to switch easily in, in um, teaching online. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, we're going to show you how to adapt, Sir, not adapt, I don't like that word, how to use the same activity you're using in a classroom, how you can do it in a class, in a, an online setting, okay? So, and the week after, you're going to come back if you have any questions, so we're going to invite you to think about something that uh, you would like to do online, if you want to do it online, or you want to use with technology and we're going to help you out with that okay so this is the plan for january where we will have something for february and so on and nadia will talk about the, the batch so on campus Ricci, campus Ricci, i don't know if you don't know what that is it's it's uh the site where all the Ricci people from all the different subjects create online courses and we have created uh, a few, but the, uh, it's also kind of the platform where we share our events, uh, ev webinars. Uh, so, so that's why we're sending you to that uh, site uh, for you to get a badge for your participation today. This means that um, it'll uh, uh, ex tell uh, whoever wants to know, like you or your maybe your principal or someone else, wants to know uh, which uh, webinar you've participated in. So if you follow every step here, you can uh, earn a badge. And um, if I know that it's sometimes not clear the way that uh, it's, you know, it's pretty small here at the top, but um, uh, you can find the webinars here at the top. Okay, uh, this is the calendar. And today, what date are we today? Are we December 14th already? Crazy. 
So here, these are all the both events, but also if you go on and you log in and uh, you can log in as a guest, but no, 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 not when you want a badge. You need to really have an account and open an account when you want a badge. So that way you go in Rendezvous du Récit. Uh, and uh, I won't go in detail because it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, but this is where you find all the, the uh, online courses. And you also have here Événements. And this is where you can find les rendez-vous virtuels du, du récit. Okay, so on the slide um, here and here, rendez-vous virtuel, and you find here December 14th, ah, it's all the way down alphabetically. So you can click here and you can ask for a badge by telling us what you've learned, what you've discovered today in our presentation. But by following all the steps, uh, you can ask, uh, get your badge. And if you have a question, Sandra, what do you do? You ask us for help because we are there. Thank you for being uh, present um, with us and uh, trying our things and uh, following us. So we're very happy to see that you enjoy uh, what we do. So we do our best to uh, provide uh, rich and uh, and fun resources, but also uh, provide support to ESL teachers. So, and uh, what do we say? Happy holidays. Yes. Rest. Uh, rest. It's important. I know it's been uh, hard uh, month. Yeah. <laughs>